Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, let's, let's rise up. We'll open up in prayer. How you all doing? Good. That's wonderful. The week is going good. It's midweek. <laughs> Amen. With Jesus. With his love and protection. With his guidance. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Let's just pray. Let's bring our thoughts, our mind together. It's been all over the place, I understand. Working and whatever. But now it's time. As we bring our thoughts before him, okay? Let's pray. Thank you, Father. Dear Heavenly One, thank you. Tonight, we are here again, gathered together in your presence. Father, this is another day of blessing, another day of encounter and experience of your presence. Father, we don't take this opportunity for granted. We're so grateful of it. Thank you. It's not because of anything else. It's not because of our strength or anything else, but it's because of your mercy. It's your mercy that brought us here together tonight, Father. It's your love. It's the heart that you created within us that's seeking after you. It's the hunger. It's the, the thirst that you created within us that's going after you. Master, we are truly after you tonight. Lord of glory. We are here presenting ourselves in your presence as a holy and a living sacrifice. Worshipping you, Father. Giving you the honor. Bringing the honor unto you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There is no luck in our life. There is nothing. There's no luck. of your fullness, Master. Out of your fullness, Jesus, we are so satisfied. We are whole. Out of your fullness, Father, there is no emptiness in us. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your awesomeness. Thank you for your protection and grace, Jesus. Master, I ask that today, tonight, won't be exceptional. Tonight will be that other day that you visit us. Cover us by the power of your blood. Cover this place. Cover all of us by the power of your blood. Holy Spirit, please come. Come quicken us. Touch each one of us tonight. We want to feel you. We want to have that encounter with you. Holy, 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 holy spirit. Here we are before Thee, Master. Speak to our spirit. Let us hear Your voice. A true encounter, a true visitation. A night of visitation, we pray in Jesus' name.
we just praise you, Father. We praise you, God. You are an almighty God. You are an almighty God. We worship you tonight, God. We bless you, Father. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Father. I've come to seek your face and everything else can wait I'm here for you and everything else can I've come to seek your face and everything else. Here in your prayer. 
just worship you, God. We worship you, Father. We just thank you for your presence tonight, Lord, as you just rest, rest. Savior, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Come on. Raise your hands up to Jesus. Open up your mind, your heart right now. Open your spirit to him and tell him you love him. Tell him just one time, just tell him you love him. Father, we love you. Tonight, Master, we worship you. Tonight, we're here to say we love you, Lord. louder stay in the spirit stay in the spirit yeah talk to him hallelujah thank you jesus thank you for your presence master have that moment the moment that you express your heart to your savior let it be this moment that moment Another day of some kind of religious practice, it's not good. But when church service is, when the church service becomes a service, a night of a true, true encounter, true fellowship with the Lord, then it's meaningful. We don't need anything to get there. Everything we need is within us. All we have to do is just unlock ourselves to His Spirit. So I'm going to ask everybody as the music in the background is playing, close your eyes for a minute. Just talk to Jesus. Pray in the Spirit. Don't wait for anybody to come and quicken you and touch you. He's right next to you. He's right there. Everything you need, He's got it. Everything I need, He's got it. I am here today to have that encounter with my Savior. I want a visitation from heaven. I want His touch. 
the true meaning of life is found in that fellowship with Jesus. So please let me encourage you. Just close your eyes. Forget yourself. Forget the person next to you right now. Put your hands up and then just talk to him for a minute. Just for a few minutes. Come on. Break through. Let's break through in the spirit. Hallelujah. Mandoria bagitalia rosso shokotoya. Nimam breshkata sisha bras la bakata ya father. Yes, you've come to set us free. The Son of God, Jesus. Duke ala barria brasotos o brashka la pasa. And I speak your freedom to reign. I speak your freedom to take over. Full control over this congregation tonight. Over us. Reign, Jesus. Let your presence be felt strong tonight. Let us feel you, Jesus. Let me feel you, Jesus. Change me, O oh Lord. Mold me, Jesus. Inside out. Manta kariaba soto zoma shela bandiye. Al alfa kiaraba soto shuma kata i pashanda. I give you praise, Jesus. seated thank you worship leaders thank you so much God bless you <clears throat> hallelujah thank you Jesus So for the last few weeks, we've been discussing about the missional family, and um, I'm not, I, I'm really, I, I can't be much far away from that topic, and uh, I'm going to focus on, on, on one area tonight, and um, I'll share what, what the Lord has given me with you. Um, so the missional family, pastor really thought, I thought it was wonderful lesson uh, uh, last Sunday. Uh, I think everybody must buy that CD. Or if it's not, if it's not, if we don't sell it or get it for free. But one word or the other, get it. I say get it whether you're married or not. Though it talks, it talks about sex and marriage, but I believe that teaching was really for everybody. You need to be really knowledgeable in that area. We are just, you know, um, we, as a body of Christ, we are really struggling in that area. If, if, I, if it's safe to say that, we are, and we need knowledge. People think all they need is just love to stay strong, stay in marriage, and do it right. Yes, love is important, but there are more things that you need to have in marriage. And, 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 the, and, the, and the other big part of marriage needs, you know, you need to have knowledge. You need to have knowledge. So I thought it was a lot of information he has given us last week. I thought, I mean, last Sunday, 
I thought the teaching was packed with a lot of information. I heard a few people saying, it was too much. <laughs> it's never too much. <laughs> so, I encourage you, you get, you get the CD or download it or, or just get it somehow. And, and uh, listen to it one more time. So, the missional family, on that topic... Um, we had four different sections we, 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 we've been um, trying to cover, and I, I believe we're on, the, on the third one. And the creation of God was the first one. The missional marriage was the second one. And uh, prophetic purpose of sex was the third one. And living in communities, the, the fourth one. So we're on the third one. Under that, as a subtopic, I'm going to just take out... Uh, where <clears throat> the prophetic purpose of sex <clears throat> where pastor made the statement saying married sex produces godly offspring to further God's prophetic purpose which that talks about raising and releasing missional children. So tonight let me stand as children's advocate. And I would like to speak about children's tonight. It's a little bit unusual kind of teaching or preaching, but I'm trusting the Lord that he'll help me because I thought I see children as a, a little small window where we go look through to see what God has for future. The whole wide world can be seen through children. The little children running around that we take for, for granted, that child can be a child one day to become a king and make us bow. <laughs> that ch child can be a lawyer who can help us get out of our mess, can be a doctor, a physician, who can get us some help, uh, 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 help with our health. So there's so much to see behind children. So not to talk about children in the church. I don't see the fairness of it. Fairness of it. So it's a big deal to God and it's a big deal to me. So tonight, I'm going to just focus on that. I'm going to do my best to focus on that. Though I know it's very vast, it's very wide, it's, we can spend days on this topic, but I just want to ignite something within us. Because a child, every child, a child is not a burden. A child is not an insignificant part of society just because they're little, just because they're small. It doesn't mean that they're really small. And a child is not a burden. A child is a gift of God given by God to us to fulfill God's purpose for our, our life. When a child is given to us, us parents, know that the purpose behind that gift is a fulfillment of God's purpose. It's God doing it. It's God gives a child. And God is given a child for reason. That reason is because he wants to fulfill a purpose in your life, in my life. <clears throat> so when I say a family or a, 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 um, a, a, a parent, don't take it as only, you know, those like myself. I got two children. I have my, my biological children. But I also have my spiritual children. These are my children. I see them just like my own. I have to. If I don't get to that level of understanding, 
I can serve God's purpose to its fullness. If I'm only focusing on my own biological children and I ignore the others, I'm missing God's plan. So when I say parents, if you don't have a child, know that you are a parent. When I say parents, if you have your own child, I'm talking to you too. So whether you have your own or not, all of us are parents. Because it takes a village to raise a child. Is that Hillary said that? <laughs> Is that Hillary said that? Okay. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah, only one thing she's right. Okay. <laughs> it is a true statement. So with that being said, which means there is a responsibility on me, on you. And we have to be intentional with the way we act in front of children. With the way we conduct before children. That's what makes us to be mission family in line in regards to children so what does the bible tell us about god's heart for children i believe everything should start right there and understand what god says about children will help you and i to be careful with the way we act around them Talking about missional family, missional family covers so much, which that includes with the way we act, we conduct ourselves before our children at home, here in church, and in the community. So, some people believe that the Bible has very little to say about children. But the scripture reveals that children are very prominent in the Bible. Children play a significant role in the unfolding of the message of the Bible. Believe it or not, there are more than 1,700 references in the Bible to children in childhood. Whether it's to, for those neglected or exploited or, or to the roles and responsibilities of parents or to the special ways in which children are part of his unfolding plan, one way or the other throughout the Bible, at least 1,700 times. The reference in there. Which means this topic of children is a big deal to God. So the Bible, in one way or the other, clearly teaches that we need to be serious about children. Because God himself is, is serious about this matter. In Matthew 18, verse 5 and 6, we see that how Jesus got grieved when they were trying to hinder children from coming to him. Nothing grieves Jesus more than hindering the children. That scripture there is heavy. Talking about the little one there, it can be the little children, the physically little one, or the spiritually little who just got, a person who just got born again. But however you want to take it, little is little, little children before the Lord is little children, okay? So there, 
when they were trying to hinder or trying to stop children from coming to Jesus, we see Jesus being grieved over that. And he made a statement saying, look, it's better. I think we should go and read it. Matthew 18, 5. Can we read it together? Can you put it up there? Okay, good. So Jesus, we see that however, uh, whoever receives one little children, children like this in my name receives me. And whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if millstone were hang around his neck and beware drowned in the depths of the sea. You know, this millstone is a funny thing. I'm not sure if you're all familiar with it. But, you know, I'm from Africa. So they, I've seen people using them. They use them, you know. It, it's, I see that. You don't know it, huh? Okay. <laughs> so, millstone is, it's, uh, it's made from two pieces of stone, okay? There is one stone, w which they call is, I believe it's a bed stone, which goes at the bottom. And there is another one, they call it a runner stone goes at, 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 at the top. It's made like a concave and convex kind of shape, okay? So they use it to grind grains, okay? They use it to, to, to grind wheat and, 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 and grains. And the thing is very heavy, very, very heavy. So here we see Jesus is saying, instead of you hinder a little one, you rather you, it's better for you to be thrown under the ocean, under the water, with that heavy stone tied around your neck. Think about it. Means it's better for you to die in such horrible death than you hinder the children. That tells me. Jesus is very serious about the child's walk. He's very serious about the tending of children. We don't have no business. He's saying, look, this is up to me. When they try to come to me, when they give attention to me, when they're seeking after me, he's saying, look, don't look down them. Those that look little, yet they're not little. There's something I know is bigger than little is what, what Jesus is saying. I didn't see him judging a sinner in that manner. It's heavy. It's very heavy. The matter regards to children is very serious before Jesus. It's very serious before Jesus. When we neglect it, when we take it lightly, we lose our blessings. God regards children as precious. Children are a sign of God's blessing. Children's attitude and teachableness illustrates the, re the relationship God wants with adults, with us. He, Jesus, uses children as example of the humble dependence that the kingdom of God requires of adults. When a child comes to you and say, Dad, fix this broken toy with that boldness, with that innocent heart. God is speaking to you. Depend on me just like that. When a little child comes to you and say, Mom, Dad, I wet my pants. Change my diaper. <laughs> or help me change my diaper. God is speaking to you. Be real with me. Be real with me. Be vulnerable before me. 
When a child is crying when you leave home to go to work. When a child is grieving because mama and dad are going to work. God is speaking to you saying, seek after me. Diligently. With your all, all heart. With your all, all of it. They are precious before God. The Bible illustrates that children are sensitive in understanding the things of God. They're sensitive. They're close to his heart. That's why in Matthew 18 we see that when the disciples arguing amongst themselves about who would be the greatest in his coming kingdom. Jesus knowing what they were saying it says. He responded back to them by taking the child into his arms and said, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So these children are precious before him. He uses them to minister to us. Children are as precious And walk, walk in gospel to us. So therefore they are so precious before him. They, though they are little, but yet they are not really little. Children prove to be chosen agents of God's mission. Children or children are not only the ones who follow but also the ones whom God sends to lead. Children are key figures in the biblical narrative. Isaac, Moses, Samuel, David, Jesus himself. See, God himself chose to enter this world as a baby, not as a king or as a rabbi or as some kind of high priest. That's why God loves them unconditionally. When they come to him, he said, just brought them to me. No question. In Mark 10, 13, we see that. No question. Just bring him to me. And it says, he laid his hands on them, blessed them. Unconditionally. No condition. He takes them just like they are. They're precious before God's eye. And these children that we think that they're little. I mean, my wife sometimes says, them little ears. Be careful with them little ears. Be careful with them little eyes. Those are little, but they're not little. They can understand the things of God. I don't know how, I don't know where that came from. All I know is I can testify to that. When Joel was little, it just it used to it, it used to just amaze me. Every time we play a worship song, he just goes along with it. Like we're doing it. Like he understands the word. I could see his spirit is just going with it. They are sensitive to godly things. They are sensitive to God. It's not only God's love and care for children that is notable in the Bible or noticeable in the Bible, we also see that God has a very high regard for the ability to understand the faith and to participate in his redemption activities. If you scan through your Bible from the start of God's covenant with his chosen people, God expected that the children would be included so that they too would learn to love and fear the Lord. For example, in Deuteronomy 31, 12, we see it clearly how children were included with the grown-ups, with the adults, to sit with grown-ups. It's one family. And participate, attend in the, in, 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 in the release of the word. It really, in the modern way of 
doing it, the preaching of the word. The reading of the word. And that went on when Joshua, be when Joshua became the leader of Israel. He also kept that culture. He included children, children in the reading of the law. Children are not only sensitive to spiritual things, but they're also ordained and designed to praise God and His glory. That's why we see it's been writ it's written in, in, in Psalm 8:2, from the lips of children and infants you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. So these children, children are not only consumers, but they are also participators. They are ordained and designed to praise God just like you and I. So children are very, very important in a family that's missional. Children, the matter of fact, are the mission field. I appreciate and admire everybody who's in children's ministry. Investing in children, in youngsters. It's a very important, very important ministry in the church. Our church has different children ministries. There's always a need. There's always a space, a place. It's only as you and I come together and understand the value of this ministry and the importance of focus, focusing on, on, on children that we can cultivate that ministry, that we can see results in ministry, that we can run with God's plan. For He sees them precious, for they are so important in His sight. They must be the true mission field, and especially here in our church, as we see them multiplying. <laughs> yes, if you want to plug yourself in ministry, that will be a good place where you benefit a lot from it. The reward is amazing. By God's grace, I have the opportunity to go different places. And I used to travel a lot back to Africa for ministry. And just to teach my kids and also to just bless myself, I used to do one thing. We go do different things. The focus wasn't really mainly children's ministry, but I do it on the way. So I used to ask Joel and Joshua, look, go ahead and collect all your clothes that you grew out of. And also clothes that you currently use. And then I used to take them. I put them in the luggage. And then I used to take them to Africa. And we go in the street. And then we just dress the children that needs help. Every time I do that, I feel my life impacted. It's a strong ministry. There's something about it. There's no second thought, second guess, or any question about it. You line up yourself in that ministry, you will never miss God's plan. You will never miss. It's a great mission field. And the missional family must support and carry on in that ministry. I wish I have a better preaching tonight. 
my preaching is, look, let's pay attention to what God has given us. Don't look too far. Your assignment is right next to you. Don't wait for the angels to come and command you to get up and do something about this. Or until you hear some kind of sound from heaven. You just heard it. That is the best mission field. In missional family, the, 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 the ministry in children must be supported by all of us. Whether you're teaching in the back or you do anything in any of these classes or here in this church or in the community, keep this close to your heart. That's our ministry. That's our responsibility. Because the, the future is packed within children. It's only when we get the children ready for the future that we see blessings. So there are expectations in your behalf, in my behalf. God expects that adults will love, care for, protect, and train, and nurture their children, our children. Parents are to train and teach their children at home. Parents are to train and teach their children here. Your biological child or your spiritual child. Train up. Train up. When I say train up, train up is not just saying do this, do that, do this, do that. Train up is walking before a child and walking right. It's leading by, let me show you something. Come over here. Come on, you, you stand over here. Come over here. I'm going to show you something. Can you come? Okay, Salem, come on. Come on. You, you, come on. I need you. Come on. You come. Just hold them by, by right there. Okay. Is, is it okay if she, my wife put the hand? Okay, put your hands right there. Okay. All right. So, you know what train up means? Train is the vehicle that goes behind the car. The first one is the car. Do you know that in the train? This is the car. This is the train. Okay. The train. Train up means put your hand on there. And put your hand. I train them up. I train them up. And I'm the car. Train up a child. And the way he. Come on, follow me. In other words, walk before them right. They will never miss it. If you don't get it right, everybody will be in the wreck. So in order to get it right, get it right within you and get it right with everybody else, we better get right before God. Thank you so much. That's what train up means. A missional family is a family who walks in that manner. A train up a child means to walk before God as you pull others to walk in the same manner. So parents, we train our children. We're commanded to train our children, whether they're yours or others. Everybody's yours. In Proverbs 6.20, it says encourage, uh, um, 6.20, um, it encourages children to keep their father's commands and not to forsake their mother's teaching. This is directly to them. In Proverbs 22.6, it talks about the responsibility of parents to create a desire for spiritual things in children's heart, in their life, in the children from a young age. Train a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not turn from it. means create that desire within him. If I'm praying and my children see me praying... And instead of sitting before any TV, whatever, screen, whatever, you know, or playing with co computer day and night, I'm just installing some kind of desire within them. What is that? 
Why is daddy on his knee all the time? If I'm studying the word at home and I have that discipline, I'm reading the word all the time. They see me doing it. By doing so, what am I doing? I'm installing a desire within them to read the word. So when the Bible says train up a child, train a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, means train him up a younger age. Means create that desire within him when he's young, when she's young. So that when they get old, they will be godly people. If they end up in the White House, we have godly people in the White House. We don't have to worry about much. They'll get things right for us. When we carry on on our responsibility and see children like, just like Jesus see them. And we take them seriously and invest in their life. The benefit is to us. The benefit is to, 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 the, to, to the community, to the land, to the country. So this is a serious matter. In Deuteronomy 6, 7, it exhorts adults to teach their children to love and obey the law at every possible opportunity. Talking about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, and it says all the time. Means invest, put, put that word within them. Bring that conversation from the word. Somehow, some way, be intentional. So that train up responsibility is on you. It's on me. It's on us. It's only when we pay attention to it that we truly are now become the missional family. The missional family includes the matter of children. It's not all about this. The nice chocolate. You know what I'm talking about? Of course it is. But this says the children are in there. The word says the children are part of that missional family. And we must focus on them. We are to respect and welcome children. Yeah, they're little, but they must be respected. Jesus modeled for us concerning respect for children in Matthew 19. He insisted that his disciples receive the children and not hinder them coming to him. That's a form of respect. That's why, that's why what he said what he said. Respect to them is a big deal to him. We have to respect them. Remember, you and I are the primary caregivers. The children. So we have to be sensitive to their feeling. The fact that God himself trusted his own son to humankind as a, an exposed child to... Reveal himself here on earth. That Jesus experienced here on earth as a child is a model of trust and responsibility for you and I to follow. God gave the precious child Jesus to, to, to earthly parents. And the children you have are gifts from God. And he gave them to you because he is trusting you. He is trusting you. We have to carry through. We have to carry on. We can't afford disappointing God. He trusted us. And we need to stand as trustworthy children. 
So it is vital that parents and children find that strong bond for the well-being of the children themselves, the community, and the land. I'm going to give you a scripture, and I want to leave it to you, and maybe I'll close with that. I want us to read it together. It's from Malachi 4, 4 through 6. I want to conclude with that. Why am I saying these things? I'm saying these things because I want to bring some reminder to this body. Not that you don't know, but I believe preaching, teaching, church is not, it's not only a place where you find new information, but it's also a place where you find reminders. I just want to draw this thing and bring it a little bit closer to your heart. And then I want to challenge all of us to pay attention with the way we walk before our children. The generation coming is a result of your labor. The generation coming is a result of my labor. If I'm lazy and I'm neglecting to tend the children, then the generation coming can destroy me, can destroy you. If I pay attention and I give it value and I tend and serve the children like I should, like God expects me to do, I will benefit from the blessings the good children will bless the land just like the bad children will bring curse to the earth what we worry about this gays lazy bears all kind of stuff today uh, you know i saw something it was a little bit shocking for me and my wife and uh, you know at work now they they try to have some kind of uh, holiday to honor gays and lesbians kind of thing where she works at. And I'm, man, where are we going? Where are we going? It's just the fruit. It's just the fruit. See? That bad been sown years back. What we see is the fruit. We need to abort that. We need to live above that. We need to wake up and pay attention to the greatest blessing God has given us and nurture it. We need to pay attention to the children that God has given us. If we don't, the next generation will get worse. It's heavy. If you really think about it, it's heavy. Everything we do in here is all about them. It's heavy. The gospel didn't make it here because somebody down the road neglected it. The gospel made it to this point here because somebody made a, paid a great sacrifice. It's a result of that sacrifice. Until we wake up. And until we start understanding the value of what God has put in our hands, we can easily waste it and bring curse on, earth, on this earth. So as a missional family, brothers and sisters, tonight I just want to remind you that there is a greatest assignment given to you and I. There is a high calling and a high expectation from heaven. The next generation... The next generation, you're all going to die. I'm going to die. We're all going to die. Who's going to take over? If we cannot think down the road, if we don't pay attention to what can happen, our, ch our children, our children, children will suffer from ignorance. 
May God forbid that. May God help you and I to pay attention to what God has given us, to what God has put in our hands. I always tell my children, and I'm not ashamed of it. I always tell them, first, I am the pastor of this house. I tell them that. If I lose everything, I lose everybody here as much as I love them. I tell them I got church at home. I always tell them my first responsibility, my children, my wife. I'm sorry, don't get mad at me. I love you all, but you come next. Whether they like it or not, they're going to get preached. I'm going to preach them. If I see something getting out of line, nobody eats dinner. We're going to have good sermon till 2 a.m. Dad will be talking while everybody's yawning. She said, it's true. It's true. We got to work at what we have. We got to keep what we have. All the blessings God has given us, we can't afford taking them for granted. Got to pay attention to them. You know, the family bond is so strong back, back home. I, I mean, it's strong here too, but the culture difference, oh man, it's, it's not the same. I'm sorry, you know, it's not the same. There's a difference. So, in this country, people worry about 401k and retirement plan and all that, and, you know. But back home, people don't worry about that, mu that much. You know, their retirement plan probably is 4K, 5K. You know what it means? Four kids, five kids, <laughs> or 6K. When they get old, there's no question about it. Kids will take over, take care of everything. But growing up, parents will do everything. They invest. They spend the time together with their children. Children will get full attention. That's why I'm not struggling much about it. I can drop anything for my children. If they need me, I can be there anytime. No, I am in their business. In everything they do, I got to know. <laughs> I am the third, the second, the third person in there. <laughs> the culture difference. I believe it's good culture, don't you think? I think we should bring that. And that missional family... Is that? That's it. When you have a common goal, and the common goal is to bring the family together and, and, and then help everybody walk right before God, everything will be just fine. Everything will be just right. When we don't, I am busy over there with my phone, and she's busy over there in the kitchen cooking, you know? And they're busy over there on their phone. They don't get no instruction from the father. The mother and the father continuously arguing and fighting. Children are not learning anything but bad things from parents. That's a problem. If married couple, if nothing stop you from arguing, your children's presence should be one big reason to put a stop to your arguing in front of them. Go close the bedroom and argue all you want. Fight all you want, but keep them out. That's how you walk. That's how you train up a child. That's how you walk right before children. When we neglect to pay attention to these things, the meaning of the missional family becomes meaningless. So children are the very core of a missional family, is my message tonight. When we don't follow that, Malachi 4, 4 through 6 will happen. Can we read it together? Malachi 4, 4 through 6.
It says, look, remember the law of my servant Moses. Oh, what happened? The decrees and laws I gave him at Horeb for all Israel. See, I, am I reading the right place? Am I? No? Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to read what I have. It's the same message. See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before that great and grateful day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of the parents to the children or to their children and the hearts of the children to their parents. Or else I will come and strike the land with total destruction. What brings that destruction? When we lose that oneness with our children. When you lose them, you're inviting destruction. See, God's blessing is, is hidden in there. It's hidden in there. That's why they're so big deal to him. That's why they're so big deal for a missional family. Church, let's pay attention to our children. They're not telling them, the, they're not giving them the right information at school. If you sleep and you don't care about it, what they hear is a seed. One day it's going to become fruit. Are you ready to eat the fruit from it? If not, it's our time to wake up and be aware of what the devil is doing all around us. We got to help our children. We got to protect them. You know, there's a difference between punishment and discipline. We are called to be good at discipline, not punishment. Nobody. Us pastors. We don't have no, any right to punish anybody here. But we have every right to discipline you. It's not in the word. Punishment is, you know why? Because Jesus took all the punishment. Nobody should be receiving a punishment. It's all is done. Punishment deals with, with the past, with your failure. It's a payback for what you missed. But discipline deals with your future. It's to prepare you for a better future, to bring a better of you. So what I'm saying tonight is not, don't, I'm not saying be hard on your children, punish them. I'm saying discipline them. And train them up rightly from the word. And help them. That will make him to be a real man and a real woman of God. That's what we want. That's what the missional family is all about. So children are also included in that missional family. When we get it right with them, the land will be blessed. When we lose them, God is disappointed. That's when we see destruction. That's why we see all these destructions. When Apple came out, and take over, or this electronics uh, stuff, the internet thing, came out and, and take over on our children's heart and mind, we thought it was a simple game. The enemy has deceived us. We thought they were entertained. But it was a seed that was planted. It's the fruit that showed up now. Until you and I are fully up. And start praying about it. And start paying attention to this matter. And tend our children properly and godly. We're going to suffer. That's not your portion. That's not my portion. I don't want it. I refuse to have it. I'm part of the missional family. Aren't you? I want to be the part of the missional family. Don't you? You believe in missional family. Don't you? So the missional family is a family that tend, protect, train up. A child. And children are part of that missional family. And God's blessings 
are within them. They are a gift from him, and he has given us for a reason, because he wants to serve his purpose through them. Amen? God is going to do anything in the future is going to be through the children. If he's going to raise evangelists who's going to impact the whole world, it's going to be one of those children. Talk about in the future. If God is going to raise anybody who's going to resurrect Lazarus in the future, it's going to be one of those, those children. So don't mess with them. They're a little dynamite. Let's, let's stand up and pray. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. So before we go home, I want us to do one thing, if you would, please. Um, look, if I see a few children in here. If you are with your child, yeah, just hold him up or touch him, okay? And then we're going to pray over him. And if you don't have a child, you're still a parent, remember, okay? So we're going to pray for this church. For every single child in the church, tonight we're going to pray for them, okay? Our prayer is what does that magic, Okay? The prayer of a righteous man avails much, the Bible says. Okay? Okay. So before we go home, that we're going to pray, okay? So let's, let's just stand before him. Just put your hands, one hand on, on your child, and another one stretch it to the Lord. Stretch it to the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we're standing in your presence tonight to speak, to erase and cancel every curse. In the name of Jesus, we cancel it. We cancel it. Every work, every attack, every power of darkness from hell that stands against our children. We cancel it out in the name of Jesus. We cancel it out in the name of Jesus. And we speak your protection upon them. A hedge of protection, Father. Do you feel his anointing? I feel God's anointing. I feel God's anointing. Come on, speak it. Parents, you have every right to lose or to bind whatever is working against us. Your children, the good or the bad, lose the good and bind the bad in the name of Jesus. Let God's plan be established within them. Let His purpose be served through them. In Jesus' name tonight, Father. Father, I speak and release the power of your blood. I speak and release the power of your blood, Father. And I break every connection, every network. Every power of darkness right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Marco Tashila Baba Basaya. Iriamas Kotasha. Come on, parents, pray. Help me, please. I feel Jesus in this place. Help me, please. Pray for your children. Pray. Mandoria Bakata Shaka. Every child in this house, in this church, Father, in the name of Jesus, we bring them up to you. We bring them up to you. We present them in your presence, Father. Right now, Father, release your anointing upon them, Father. Let your anointing break every yoke over their life, every plan and every attack of the enemy. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Father, we pray over them for bright mind, a sound mind. Father, we pray over them for the fear of God to be installed in them. We 
declare and we decree in the name of Jesus we declare and we decree we declare and we decree we declare and we decree father your plan we declare your mind in them in Jesus name La pata kutaya, that seed, Father, we cut the root of it. That seed that the enemy sown, we cut the root of it. We command it to die and to disease in Jesus' name from today on. Protect your children, Father. Protect your children, Father. Protect your children, Father. I pray that you raise powerful women and men of God from these children, from this church. I pray, Father. A woman, a man of God that runs for you. I pray that you raise many who's going to bring solution. Yes, Father, who brings your blessings to the land. Oh, Father, we pray over their heart, over their mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Breathe upon them, Father. Breathe upon your children. Breathe upon children. And I pray that you give grace to parents, to all of us. Give us grace so we can train up a child. So we can raise up a child. Give, up, give us grace so we gain the wisdom, Father, to guide and discipline with love and with care. To discipline with patience, Father, with that long-suffering love. Every parent, your grace, Father. Bless every person, every parent with your providence. Provide, Father. Mandara la ba 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 ira la ba 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 so. Yuru lo lo la ya la 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 ba ba si. If there is anybody. Who needs a prayer over a child who is really getting out of line? Or if you know somebody or somebody's child who needs a prayer because they're not having it together, they need a touch from God, His anointing is in this place. We're going to trust Him. If you need a prayer in that line, in that regards, please come on. Don't be shy about it. Come over and we'll pray will pray and if you are a parent you're struggling with the way you raise up your child we're gonna pray for you too hallelujah come on hallelujah hallelujah need a prayer you're dismissed if you want to spend a little more time here in prayer we're going to continue to prayer to uh, we're going to continue to pray god bless you love you stay safe